Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I wanted to show you all how I'm going to sculpt the fairy house using a broken terracotta pot as a base. So this pot has been quite weathered. Um, I, it was in use until last year a windstorm kind of blew all my plants over on the porch and this one broke but I think it'll be perfect for making like a little village or something. Like I don't have too much of a uh, of a vision in mind um though at the time of recording it is may 1st so i think i want something very like spring themed like spring in the fullness of you know not quite summer yet but spring is certainly here like no more worrying about frosts and i'm using just plain white um sculpey this is the box that i get of it actually <laughs> that you can see there um, and I'm just, I pulled out a big old chunk of it because there's no telling how much we're going to use here. And you want to make sure that all of the air bubbles are very much out of the clay. Okay. So just, and this clay is really nice because it's very, um, soft and squishy, very easy to, uh, to work with. I'm going to incorporate just a little bit more into here. And you can see how this one, and it really warms up the more you use it, so. And as I'm kneading and massaging the clay, I'm kind of wondering what kind of shape this is going to take. I think mushrooms, because I really love, like, the aesthetic of mushrooms. But, um, last time I tried making a fairy house that was mushroom-themed, it kind of like died in a fire <laughs> um in a baking accident so I'm just gonna kind of roll out and condition and massage this clay as I think okay so I'm gonna pull off a chunk and just take it in I'm just gonna smush it down into the pot um because I kind of want like that stair stepped effect maybe I think I'm probably gonna use a lot of um, fake moss recording failure what's going on recording failure I guess I'll try again. Good thing I have two cameras set up. <laughs> so I'm kind of shaping this one. I'm going to need a whole nother level, I think. I hope it's not full or something. No, I just emptied it out. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. So I'm kind of smushing down. This also, this could quite possibly be the smallest fairy scene that I've made. I usually have a tendency to go with like bigger. <laughs> so I'm thinking we might have the little fairy house in a mushroom. Maybe? I don't know. Um, but I'm just building up bit of a scene here. Kind of one little pillar at a time. Huh. Kind of just like that. So you can really see. I think I didn't really anticipate building a whole lot off of the base but this is art so this is what happens <laughs> so I'm gonna grab a tile here and this tile has quite a bit of like build up on it so let me see if I can't find my tools here they are 
using the side of a tissue blade can really get a lot of the scuzz off of the ceramic tile. And I haven't really found that this has any kind of negative impact on my blades. all this stuff off. So I don't want that getting mixed into my clay. Okay. So now we have our little tile. Just going to set that down. And I'm going to start conditioning up a little bit more clay. Just, I don't know, I'm really interested to see how this evolves. Because I want this, I think, to be something that you could sit into a, um, a flower pot. going to get this and this will give us a nice little base that we can attach some charms and um, like let's see some different uh, like fake moss and stuff too maybe but I want to continue like I don't know if I want a spiraling down like, how, how do we want this, you guys? I'm definitely going to need a bigger bottom step than that. Just picking off the crumbles of clay as they come. shaping this around. Hmm, sometimes I wish I had a little bit more of a background in sculpting <laughs> so I could feel a little less like I'm just making this stuff up on the fly but um at the same time though it's an art not a science you don't have to be like you know Michelangelo to enjoy it you don't have to be an expert at something to enjoy what you're doing. So we have a little bit coming up here. But I think I'm going to put just another step. Uh, not quite ready for that to happen yet. And also I'm kind of looking at this and I want um, some texture on this clay because I think I am going to go through and um, bake this first and then start adding some more detail to it. So you can see here I just have this little textured leather working tool um, that I'm just going to come through. And this texturing will actually give something for the acrylic paints and things to um, to nestle into. That way it's not just like my fingerprints. Um, So there. 
there we go. And this also, if I come through and use like a um, silicone glue or hot glue to attach um, the fake moss, um, or dried moss actually, um, this will give me a little bit of a texture to attach to. And I think that will be a really good thing. Okay, now also, I want to add just a little bit of like a magic pond. And I have these little um, fish tank glass beads that you can see here. And I think I am going to take one and just set it in there and smoosh it down quite a bit just like that and that gives us like a little um glassy blue pond that i'm going to go back through and add like a stone border around i bet i could add a second one and make it look like a waterfall i wonder if i have any broken ones Probably, but I don't know where they are. Um, because a broken edge of one would look really cool, I think. Hmm. And I can't just take this and like smash it with a hammer. I mean, I could, I guess, but I don't think I'm going to. Hmm. Do I have any broken in the block now? Okay. Well, it was a thought. <laughs> So there's that. Now I'm going to keep going through with this texture tool. And now I can also just take a stylus, like this one here, and add in some dimpling and stipling this way as well. That way if I can't really fit this tool in, A nice little texturing. Where does this go? There it goes. Now also I do have these little Celtic knot tools that you can see here. And these are just some leather working tools and stuff but I want to see if I can take it and oh, yes imprint a little bit of knot work along the edges of the steps to kind of give it the essence of like, like guidance of coming up the steps. Just to, I mean, it might not end up showing up at all, but it's a cool concept to put in there, I think. Hmm. I know how I want to do this, you guys. We're going to have a little wire tree coming up out of the top here. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take this porcupine quill actually and I am going to stab down nice and deep into our work and then I'm just twisting it to pull it out there we go and that's going to give me a place to put the armature wire for our wire tree because I've been meaning to show you guys how to make a three-dimensional wire tree anyways so I am going to go stick this in the oven to bake and then I'm going to come right back here and we're going to make that wire tree while it bakes. So I'll be right back you guys. So, 
I'm baking it for 20 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And since this is um, its first baking, I'm not so worried about getting it baked like all the way through. I just want to get it set a bit. Um, so now on to the wire tree. This is going to be the really fun part, I think. Well, I mean, all of it's fun, but I'm really excited about this part. Um, because again, totally unanticipated. So let me see if I can't find some wire. And I'm getting myself some seed beads here that I'm going to use for the leaves. And I think I have... baggy of some more seed beads. Okay, so here we are. This is some really crappy craft wire that I got from like, I don't even know where, like a million years ago, but it's it's not crappy in that the metal is no good. It's just, it tarnishes. It's a little harder to work with sometimes. And it's like a much, much thinner gauge. Like I think um, these are at least 24 and 26, if not a 28 gauge. Like the labels came off a lifetime ago. <laughs> so what I'm going to be doing, oh, this is so much fun, is digging out my wire snips. And I'm going to cut a bunch of like 10 inch long little sections of wire. You know, I think I'm going to go, let's go like closer to like 15 inches. One, two, three, and I'm going to cut like a bunch. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Goodness. But just to give you guys an idea of how it is that I'm making the branches. Where did this even bind off? There's the end. Oh goodness. This is all kinds of tangled up. <laughs> And I enjoy using a mixture of thicker and thinner gauges in my wire trees. And I'm going to, here we have size 8 and size 11 seed beads. Um, and these are transparent jade green. These are lime green with inside color. And then these are silver lined light green. And then these are an opaque, like, Granny Smith apple green. And I'm just going to take a pinch out of these guys and set it down. So, double checking on my camera angles. I'm just going to thread on one of the small. And then kind of just alternate a random assortment of colors but alternating the sizes between the large and the small because I'm thinking of like the foliage of you know a, a spring tree is very very like vibrant and fresh and like it hasn't suffered the heat or drought of summer yet <clears throat> and so yeah I just have those seed beads down here at the tip so I'm going to take that and cross it and twist a few times. <coughs> Excuse me. And now coming off of one side, I'm going to do a 
more, you know, alternation and colors. I'm not going to do all the colors on this one because I want it to be a slightly smaller leaf. So we can take that, bend that around, and then just twist it. And I twist it in the same manner that I would like a twist tie. So this can be pretty time consuming, but um, I think that's okay sometimes. And so I'm just getting that real close to the tip of the branch. And twisting. And the tighter you twist, the more snug it's going to keep your little leaf beads down there towards the tip. And you can do more if you like, but this is one branch, for lack of a better term. Um, well, actually, that's the tip cluster of it. So now I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to twist in. Just like that. And I'm going to do this like a bajillion more times. Um... Yeah, just set that off to the side. Now this one is a thicker gauge, so we'll see how it behaves. And I found it, you could just do one leaf cluster per branch, you know, per wire segment, but I found it makes for a much more um, densely foliated tree. Like the canopy of it will be much more substantial if you come off and do the little side shoots like this. So that's definitely something to keep in mind because, I mean, not every tree has a fully, you know, lush canopy. Mm -hmm. Some trees are a little bit more scraggly and that's perfectly okay. Just bringing that down. Bringing that down. So now I'm going to twist these up a little bit. Hmm. And now you can actually take two branches, cross them around each other and twist just like that and so you can see by repeating this same um, way of building the branches you can really bring it together into like a sculpted piece. So I think for the first layer, this might be a three layer tree, I'm going to do six, then four, then two. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, I might do, 
I don't know. We'll see. I'll start with six, but then we'll work our way around. So I am going to go make all of the other branches like this. I'm going to do that off camera because this is quite time consuming. By that point, the clay base will have been baked and cooled a little bit so I can keep working with it. And so I'll meet you guys right back here. <laughs> Hey everybody, so we're back. I've pulled the clay base out of the oven and while it was still nice and hot, painted it with olive green acrylic paint. Um, and I'm letting that get nice and dry as it finishes cooling. And now you can see here, I have a couple more clusters um, these ones I didn't twist together yet because I wanted y'all to be able to see the way that I build the structure of one of my trees. And I have one more that I want to make and this one is the central, like the lead stem um, of the tree. And so again, I want to start by just threading on beads in that same kind of repetitive pattern. of alternating the large with the small. Okay. And I've gone back to using the thinnest or thinner wire um, just because I liked the way it's not so hard on my hands. Okay, and so I'm just getting this centered up and I'm twisting it the same way that we did on the other branches. But now, as it comes down, it's going to seem like we're building it up the same, but I'll show you. And in all things that I do, this is an art, not a science. Um, this is just the way that I go about it. If you feel inspired or inclined to do it differently, go for it. Experiment. Send me pictures of what you make. I'd love to see. Um, you know, to kind of uh, just get it to end up however you'd like it to be. Checking on the cameras to make sure I'm still playing. <laughs> So as this comes down then, and I'm just twisting it the same way that we did before, but now I'm going to come off and on this same branch do that again. Oops. So just bending that around and getting it going twisting. And so now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I just, I really want to make this a nice tight cluster of leaves for up at the tippy top. One of my favorite things to do when making wire trees is to pick a, um, a species of tree that I want to try to emulate. And uh, so here on this tree I really think I want like a very compact um, maple. So, and a maple behaves differently from the way that an oak or a birch or a willow does. So, um, that'll definitely be something to keep in mind. And I also recommend, um, just like traditional artists who use reference images for their paintings or sculptures, 
pull up some reference images of like a tree that you're like, oh, that's beautiful. I want to make that. And um, use its structure as a little bit of guidance whenever you're making your own tree. Um, like that's a wonderful resource that a lot of wire, you know, jewelry folks um, don't really consider, at least the, the ones I've run into. And it's like, there's nothing wrong at all with using some reference images. Okay. So now we actually have five points here on this one tree. And I think I'm going to add in just one more. Nah, yeah, one more. <laughs> Because also, whenever I'm making like a wire tree pendant, I worry about the way it looks from like one perspective. Whereas on something like this tree here, um, I'm trying to think of this in a very three-dimensional way. Um, because I want it, you know, to be a very three-dimensional um, creation. Okay, so now I'm going to just bunch all of those little leaf ends up towards there, and I'm going to start twisting down the main stem. And so from here, I'm going to take, we have our three that are two branched, I'm going to set them off to the side, and then we have quite a few that are just individual little branches. And I'm going to extend this down just a little bit more. But I'm going to start adding those in. Just like this. I was kind of building the structure of this tree downward. Trying to keep it nice and caught up with everything. And then as I add the branches on, I'm just tucking them up out of the way. kind of wrapping it around. This is my last one. Um, that's an individual that I'm going to wrap. And I think that'll give us a nice full canopy. And so from here, now I'm going to add in the double branched. And it can get kind of hard on your hands at this point. Um, To kind of wrap them in. So I'm hoping that demonstrations purposes will help you guys to see and understand what it is that I'm doing. And you'll notice I'm continually twisting in the same direction. Um, like to keep that kind of grain going Like, I've been twisting that way, so I wouldn't add this one on and twist from underneath because it really makes it look significantly messier, I think. It's your tree. Do whatever makes you happy um, because that is what is important. <laughs> okay, so in here, 
you can see, I mean, it's almost even roughly tree shaped. Um, this is not an excellent tree by any means, um, but it's a good start. So I'm going to start taking these branches and splaying them off in their different directions and positioning them. So see how that kind of works like that? And so now I'm going to come in and start tucking these guys down, the individual ones that we had added. They're a little tangled with each other, but that's fine. We'll figure it out. There we go. And then it just keeps kind of splaying down. This one's going to bloom open. Okay, so right there, it's a very airy looking tree. Let me find, here they are, my round nose pliers because I want to come in and I'm going to start from the tip of the tree. But I'm just going to come in and add some little kinks and cringles to the branches. Because unless it's something like an aspen or a birch, or um, they typically are not going to have perfectly straight um, branches. And so I'm just going to come through and kind of mess with the orientation of every single branch on this tree. So see, like this one especially, it's very nice and straight. If I just come in and grab it um, loosely with my round nose pliers and then just like that. See how it gave it like that little squiggle? I hope one of the cameras is catching this. Hmm. Well, this camera over here, the battery is about to die. So we might lose that perspective. Um, so I'm going to try to fit in as much as I can while I can. Hey, Randy. Mm -hmm. Could you bring me the charger from the uh, kitchen for the grave camera? So hopefully you can see how this is starting to evolve and it's almost very just random and haphazardous <laughs> just like Meh, I guess that sure why not that one can go like that and the more you practice the more you'll kind of get an idea of how twisting in certain ways will affect different um, branches Let's see if I can't plug this one in real quick because I really don't want to lose this camera perspective. But I have no idea if it will charge and record at the same time. Aha! Success! Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. It doesn't show me the battery icon anymore. So this will be perfect then if that'll work. And that camera isn't giving me any warnings yet. Boom! <laughs> okay. So, here we are just twisting and taming these branches a little bit. <clears throat> and that's, I do recommend making the branches maybe a little longer than what you think they might need to be because doing this patterning um, really shortens them down. If that makes sense. Like, it's almost like how a, I don't know, just squiggling it down on itself makes it a little shorter. And so there we are, after squiggling it a bit. And you can still take the branches some and like squeeze and compact and just get that nice little shape going. And then you can have all of the leaves going in the same direction, but I prefer to have a little bit more movement and um, randomness in there. And you can feel free to move the branches around to where you feel like it needs 
filled more in one spot or if it's too clustered up in another. And so now what we can do from here, let me grab my nylon gel pliers. I'm going to grab just by the trunk of the tree and continue spiraling this down. Now I'm going to pull this over here because we have the option of sending some of the roots, these branches that will become the roots, down into the clay. Um, but we could also have some kind of trail around um, on top of the ground. And I think I'd like to do that because I think copper wire is very beautiful. And the way that this stuff will age uh, will really, I think, lend itself to um, just looking pretty neat. <laughs> so I'm going to just pull off some of them. And I'm going to twist these ones up because they're going to get fed down into the little hole here. What is this camera doing? Seems like it's doing pretty good. How's that one doing pretty good? Nice! <laughs> I feel like I've had a pretty slow learning curve with um, my cameras, so I'm really glad to be like maybe getting the hang of it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just trim this one off right there. Set all that scrap wire aside, and I'm going to test... I, Randy's computer just blue screened like I, I could feel him like glowering and I looked over and he's just like <laughs> poor honey it's not like I just did all those tags oh no right in the middle of him editing something oh mercy I'm sorry though <sighs> well if anything look at how cute this is coming out mm -hmm. isn't that very pretty it is very pretty I'm sorry your computer's dying me too. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's our tree kind of down in its thing there. Um, I'm actually going to trim a little bit more off of this to see if it'll let us go in a little deeper. Oh, that made a mess. Okay, and I'm going to try to get these other roots kind of up out of the way. You know, and that just seems to be... There she goes, a little deeper in. Oops, smooshed to the top there. And this is something great too, is that you can always kind of go back in and be like, mm, I want my tree to be squishier today. And you can kind of reposition the branches and everything. Now, um, the mossy green acrylic finish on this one is looking really good. I didn't mind at all using the white polymer clay because I knew I was going to be going back through and painting it up. And I kind of did like some upward strokes to kind of, I don't know, maybe get a bit more of a mossy look. But I'm going to pull this back out. There we are. And... I'm going to separate, I'd like, I think, four or three, we'll do three, little root clusters just coming up out of the ground. And I'm just going to do them kind of the same way I did the branches. Just kind of twisting after a certain point. Some of them branch off by themselves and are twisted together before branching off again into little... Even though it's a, a tree, I keep thinking in terms of like rivers and rivulets of little uh, roots just crawling and spreading out. Let me move that out of the way a bit. And just kind of twisting them off and it once you get down this motion of this like almost twist tie tightening that that's all we do 
and then it's whenever I come back through with my pliers and like get it to be like that's when the, the real artsy fartsy stuff starts coming out. So whenever I started designing this, I did not think at all that we would be <laughs> putting a wire tree in. Like I thought there was going to be like a little mushroom or, you know, and we still have a little bit of designing left to do. So we'll see how it comes out. But I am going to take this, kind of plant it down into our ground. Oops. And... There's my pliers. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of snip them all off. To a little bit more manageable of a length. And I'm going to bring this one around a little bit. I think it's going to have some nice little kinks and and I'm just spiraling in the ends a little bit. Nope, yeah, this is something I'm going to have to do with it off of the main base. Yeah, I don't want any weird little pokey ends, so I am going ahead and spiraling the ends, but I want it to look like, you know, it was done a little bit more intentionally. I don't know, maybe I'll leave some of them pokey and straight. But yeah, I'm just really getting in here and kind of just messing up the wire. Like, I want it to be messy, wild... Like, you can almost take it and just, um, twist it around your pliers a bunch. And then grab it and straighten it out some. Like these ones I'm going to experiment with just twisting up the nose of my pliers before grabbing one and pulling it off in one direction and grabbing the other, pulling it off in the other. <laughs> and that does a really good job, I think, of making it look very um, whimsical and natural and organic. And also, keep in mind, three-dimensional, it doesn't all have to be on the same plane. You can have, I mean, depth and all sorts of stuff. And our last little cluster of roots here. Coming at it from the bottom side. Okay. So now let us I think that's going to be pretty neat, but before I press this in, I'm going to do a little bit more detailing here on the polymer clay base. I'm going to clean up all these little beads, get them put away where they're going to go. I bet a 
I've got some quartz crystal around here that I could incorporate with this too. Yeah, I've got like a, just a big bottle of some quartz crystals over here that I think I want to incorporate a couple of them. Just because why not? Okay, I'll keep those sitting there. Um, I want to come through with a paintbrush and some black acrylic. Kind of give ourselves some contrast here. And on per all y'all's uh, recommendations, I have baby wipes here instead of messing about with um, like water and um, Q-tips and all sorts of stuff like that. And I want to get the black acrylic paint that I'm using right now really down into all of those little nooks and crannies. And I'm not worried about getting it on the tile because um, it'll come off. So yeah, really getting it down into those nooks and crannies. And I'm worried it'll take off all the grain, but nope. Ooh, that looks so nice. <laughs> Uh, well, it is taking off some of the green, so that's a problem. Um, <laughs> oops. But I still think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, taking off a little bit more of the green than what I would have liked. But it is leaving the black down into all of the little crevices and stuff. So, I'm going to keep... Kind of going around. And I'm using a pretty stiff bristled brush to kind of come through. And those stiff bristles will help make sure that it does get down into those nooks and crannies. Now I don't think I'm gonna do the black on the inside because I don't want it lightening up my green. Hooray for experimentation and science and stuff. <laughs> and then while this is still kind of doing its thing, I think I'm going to come through on top of it with more green. And these paints are so old, like, so old <laughs> that I'm having to, like, shake and fight with them and stuff, so. But paints that are not ideal for doing an actual painting with are still pretty perfect for uh, for doing polymer clay purposes. And so now I'm actually going to fold this and dab it. And that's given us some pretty neat effects. It's not taking off all of our green. It's giving us some nice some more layered depth. that and now I am actually going to kind of touch it up just a little bit down here especially in the sides where I want it a little bit darker <clears throat> okay and now I am going to clean off this little bit of glass right here which I'm really glad that I left it white underneath the um the glass bobble because it really gives it this cool like glowy effect. Like a luminescence almost. Neato. Okay. So now I think I'm going to take 
the set up to the side. I'm gonna time check. We've got about 15 minutes left. Um, before I'm gonna go and do a live stream here in a minute and debut this fairy house to y'all. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's see if we have some gray granite polymer clay. So I don't want to rush this and end up not having it done for y'all. Or rather, I'd rather not have it done but it not be improperly rushed. And I'm just taking some of these little gray stones and setting them in and among, like doing a little rock border around the, uh, the pond. I'm just taking, making little rounded, uh, <clears throat> like granite that's been river worn down and pressing it down with my finger. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, that one's lost. <laughs> Sorry, my face is all itchy. Hmm. And I don't think I want to do any rocks on that side. Just because it doesn't seem necessary. And then I've got this nice little like texture tool here. And I'm just going to kind of smoosh. And I am going to come through with a little eyeshadow brush. If I get, there it is. <clears throat> and um, some black, ow, oh, matte eyeshadow. And I'm just adding a little bit of detailing to um to the stones here like darken them around the edges and stuff and I want some little stepping stones <laughs> again to lead the eye some more And I don't want them to just be perfectly round, so I'm going to kind of shape them a bit and then smush them and then use this texture tool. Smush, smush, smush. <laughs> This one's going to be right here, like that. Boop. <laughs> and I think one more little stepping stone. That looks excellent. Going to give these guys a quick antiquing.
I'm going to take some liquid polymer clay, get it on the uh, trunk, like the tap root of um, our tree here. Just like that. And I'm going to feed it down into our uh, little hill. Oh, come on. You were fitting just fine earlier. Well, and now it's smushed down a bit. <laughs> and so it actually gave like a really cool like effect. And I'm just pushing the little roots down, stabilizing the tree. And now I actually think I'm going to add in the quartz crystals. I forgot. Okay. So with these guys, I am going to use, thank you, honey. Ah, I don't have any of that color. Okay. Some leaf green. I'm going to use some leaf green polymer clay and I'm just going to take this and I'm going to set it right there like that. And which crystal do I want to use? Because none of these really have like points on them very well. But I think just a nice little chunk. Mm, I don't know if I like that with the green clay underneath it. <laughs> um, so I want to take a little bit more of the white clay. Just a little bit. I'm going to put it in there to where it'll line the back of the quartz crystal. And I'm going to smush. That makes a big difference, I think. And so I'm going to take a little bit more of the leaf green. And I'm going to put it... I want to trap some of the roots down. There we go. Right there. And I really like this one here, so I'm going to take a little bit more of that white. I'm going to put it on the butt of the, of the crystal. And then I'm going to smoosh that down. Smoosh, if I can. Oh no, it won't let me. There we go. And so from here, I'm actually going to take a couple more and just press them in. To, uh, like that and make it look like a little you know I actually have some moonstone that I think I'd rather put up in here mm, mm -hmm. I'm just scooping that back a little bit but yeah I have these really small double terminated moonstone points. So I'm going to put one in just like that. And then I think another one just like that. I'm going to use a little bit more of this leaf green. Just taking, ripping off a chunk of it with this porcupine quill poking it in for some texture because I'll be putting moss in around this too it never hurts to add some quick texture on my laptop. here on the side and uh, 
So I think this is where I'm going to leave it off. Adding a little bit of texture with the wire brush. That's not the wire brush. Where's my wire brush at? Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I've lost my favorite tool. It'll find me, though. Just quick little stipling. Good opportunity to glue on some moss right there. A little bit more of the leaf green. On the end of this very calcite quartz point. And swish like that. I'm going to go bake this. And then we'll meet you guys right back here. <laughs> Hey everybody, we're back after quite the adventurous day, and um, I unveiled this fairy sculpture to y'all um, on our live stream, but now you get to see how it's going to be complete, and right now it's still pretty much lodged to our tile. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be coming through with a tissue blade, double checking all my framing, looks pretty good. And I'm just going to try my best to get under here with that tissue blade and just kind of detach it, just like that. And that's how it looks on the bottom, which I might leave that as is, or I might paint over it. We'll just, we'll see. Um, oh, golly, Ned, that's cute, though. Like, oh, I'm jealous of whoever ends up winning this one. And here I have a big old bin of mosses. And I always get into a sneezing fit whenever I work with these. I should probably get out my, what's it called? Hot glue gun. Now what am I going to, I guess I'll unplug this one. I've got a little plug right here at my workstation. There's three little outlets on it. That is probably going to burn down my house one day, but for the meantime, this is how we roll. Today is not that day. Fingers crossed, because literally everything else that could have possibly gone wrong has gone wrong. Um, <laughs> except for burning up my uh, little fairy sculpture, which I'm so pleased while this heats up. I'm just going to ooh and ah at this for a minute. I'm really pleased with how the little water effect has come out by using that um, upside down fairy bobble. Well, not fairy bobble, uh, like fish tank glass. I'm exceptionally pleased with just the different textures of the quartz crystals, with doing the stepping stones. I love that texturing that has happened as a result of the... Um, <sighs> that little texture tool that we went through and stipled with. I really like the kind of messy paint up around on the sides. I think that's going to have a nice effect behind the moss. I like these little stepping stones. I just, just all of it, it really leads the eye up into the tree and I think this is a perfect way of utilizing a terracotta pot. You ready yet? No. <laughs> I'm horribly impatient. <laughs> okay, but what we can be doing right at this moment is choosing some different mosses. And I really like hot glue for attaching the moss. Usually makes a pretty big mess, but such is life. So I'm just going to pull off little chunks. I've got like a whole section here of like this side of moss. I also really enjoy these mixed moss kits which can be pretty expensive. That's why you just take yourself in there with a 40% off coupon and um, get them like that. Mm 
And then this one has some really weird mosses, which are so cool. <laughs> I really like this like hairy looking one. And how do I even get in here though? Surely that glue gun's just about heated up by now, too. I'm just going to pull out a pinch of this weird, hairy moss. I'm going to set this off to the side. So now, you can always tell your glue gun's ready when you can squeeze down. And it's not ready yet, is it? Okay. Yeah, it is getting hot. I don't recommend doing that. I'm just a midget. Um, so, here we go. And I love the ones that are in like little clusters like that. <clears throat> Let me grab up some scissors. There we go. You will want to have some scissors on hand. I like using my little porcupine quill to place them. Um, just cause especially, like, I really love how this quill has a pointy end and like a spooned end. Like, I love that. And that doesn't really help, I guess. So it's this way at least I can feel like I'm making eye contact with y'all a little bit. I'm going to pull these weird hairy pieces apart. Maybe this is an Irish moss? Could that be what it is? I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> and also, before I make too much more of a mess, I do want to get any unbaked clay out of the way. Because this stuff will stick in it like crazy. So I have a nice little empty container up here that I can just smush these into. Smush it down so it'll close. It's good to try to clean up my messes as they happen. Are you ready yet? Yes, okay. It's starting, you squeeze down and it beads at the top. So I'm just gonna squeeze off a nice little fat um, glob right there. And this stuff, this weird hairy moss, has such a weird, um, like, it's mostly pretty just up top. So I'm going to hide its weird end down here in the hot glue. Kind of like that. That way I'll be able to cover it up with other mosses as we progress. Um, I like to try to keep things relatively symmetrical. Pinch off that uh, extra little bit there. Like I really enjoy the feathering on this style of moss. And I'm just using this little quill in my fingernail. And push everything up and around. I want to try to avoid those tacky little hot glue strings that make it so obvious that you use hot glue. The more um, you kind of make it a little bit of, how did you even do that? Like the more you can make it a mystery, I think the better. Okay, little ones like this that are just in a nice little clump like that are pro easily one of my favorites because what we can do just come along through here and do a nice long strip on the bottom and on the top and then just kind of pat and mat it down and 
And also by using hot glue, this enables us, you know, a couple of years from now, if uh, the moss is faded out or starts to like wither away and stuff, um, you can actually just take like a hairdryer to it, heat it up and pull it off and glue on your own as a replacement. Here, I've got another little boop. There we go. And there are people who out there that I've seen use hot glue guns that just look like wizards. I mean, they are like skill levels above and beyond what I anything that I can even imagine. So don't hesitate, as usual, to experiment and try new things. Try to make as much contact with the uh, moss as what you can. I'm just going to lift it and put a glob here. Then I'm going to take this, and I'm actually going to glob that. Just right like that. Kind of tuck it down, fold the end up so it stops, like, because I don't want you to be able to see where I was smushing, but that covers up that spot. Oh man, this adds such a nice effect, I think. Yay, I'm so happy. Okay, I want to complete around the base first, I think. Normally I wouldn't just glob some on and then start randomly picking pieces, but <laughs> eh. no good excuse for myself, I guess. So I'm just going to place it on and then start to kind of tuck that moss up on top of it, again to hide where I pieced it on. And I'm trying to incorporate some like different heights and stuff here too. Oops, got some stuff to that. And now right here, I'm actually gonna do just a pretty big glob. Finish off this tube. Applying pressure from the front. Just kind of smushing that on there. And then you can kind of feather it out a little bit more. So I feel pretty good about the, around the outside. And I actually have a little bit of a peacock feather here that I wouldn't mind. I'm going to peel off some of these back feathery parts and try my best to save them. And I'm actually just going to snip right here. Nice little section of a feather, maybe. And I'm going to test it out. Check my framing. To see if I can't tuck it in back here behind this quartz crystal. Just because just I think it's pretty. <laughs> and I think with stuff like this, that is all the motivation in this world a person needs. It's like, why'd you do that? Oh, I liked it. Okay. <laughs> like, perfect reason. No, it doesn't quite fit, like, yet. I haven't really figured out a way, so I'm not going to worry about it too much right this minute. But I am going to pull this off. Kind of pull off the broken end of that. 
because I want to save these really pretty little feathered ends. And, oh, I need to put a first stick in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Load up the back. And I'm just going to, right here, I think, just a little glob. Make sure there aren't any little strings. Just kind of tucking and pushing right there. I really like that effect of folding it over its own tail end. That way it makes it look like it's crawling up from both ends. That one's really dry and crunchy. Here's a nice little little tufts and pieces. So from here what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get off a little glob just onto the tip of my porcupine quill and put it right there. And I'm going to pick up this little piece and just smoosh right down on in there. And it took some of it with it, but it left most of it there, and I think that looks great. <laughs> I guess you are recording, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So again, just globbing off some of that hot glue onto the tip of my porcupine quill. And just globbing it right there. Sure, why not? And I'm going to pick up just another little piece and just glob it right on. Just like that. And the magic here, as usual, is going to be happening in the details. So I want to pick all these weird little pieces out of this Irish moss. Pinch off the end there. I'm going to kind of try to bypass the roots just a little bit. Fill that up right there with some hot glue. Take these. And push that down in there, just like that. Excellent. And now, if while it's still a little warm, I can take a little segment like this, and use my spooned end, and tuck that in behind the roots. Ah, that's so pretty! <laughs> Because all it needs is just that little bit of encouragement. Squirch. Squanch. Oh no! The battery died on that camera. Could you give me a huge favor, Randy? Mm -hmm. Could you grab the uh, battery off the charger? And change that out for me. For favor. And I think this is actually looking pretty sharp. I'm going to add in just a little bit more right behind, right there. I'm going to use this nice little rounded lump. Is there a way to uh, get this off of here? Just suck so Did you figure it out? Mm -hmm. Thank you. There it is. Fair. A little glob. 
probably use your assistance. Okay, let me place this, uh, this piece. Be right back, guys. Thank you, honey. This is perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're back to it. <laughs> and so I'm just placing even just some individual little um, pieces of moss just to flesh it out a little bit. And all the odd little bits and stuff like that, I just toss over into my house plants. <laughs> and I really love just squeezing off a little bubble, like almost just a little dewdrop of hot glue, and then placing it, picking up some moss. And then just tapping it kind of decoratively into place. I think this is looking just so enchanted. I'm so excited about it. So this one here, I just want to pull off a couple of sprigs of this Irish moss. And again, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit larger of a dewdrop this time. Bypass those roots, smirch that down. Ah, it's separated. Not a hurry, but I have some tweezers right here that can help me to get it in to those tighter spots. Just like that. And kind of tap that down. I don't know if that one made it in time. Nope. I'm going to squeeze off just another little... And then just push it with my finger. And it covered itself right up. So you still can't see that shiny... Um, hot glue. In the variety, um, like I would recommend if you're doing one of these and you want it to look just top notch, the broader a variety of mosses you can use, the depth of color, and just the detail. I mean, it's something that you spend three hours on is gonna look nicer than something that you spent five minutes on more often than not. And so don't hesitate to spend some time, especially if you're enjoying what you're doing, don't hesitate to spend some time on it. Because the joy that you experience will show through in your work. You know. I've got a little bit back there. So I've got another pair of long nose tweezers. And I'm just going to pinch down, if I can, try to, these are really crappy tweezers, um, there we go, and I got that little blob of hot glue out of there, and I think, could this be done? I'm going to dress up the steps a little more, <laughs> I mean, it could be done, but I'm not ready for it to be. Again, I'm just going to squeeze off a little glob, swipe it with my uh, porcupine quill, pick this up, and then just tuck it kind of into place.
and just little little bits of it go a long way. And I think this is a perfect way of using up some of, oops, some of these little flyaway bits. Let me get those before the cat goes. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about that, you guys. <laughs> okay. So there we are. With a one-of-a-kind, hand-sculpted fairy garden. So I hope that this video was helpful to y'all. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, I would love to hear from you. Um, if you would like a chance to win this fairy house, or garden, <laughs> uh, then please check us out on Patreon. You can pledge just a dollar, and that'll put your name in the hat once. If you pledge five dollars, it'll put your name in the hat five times. Um, and if you pledge ten dollars or more, you'll still get your name in the hat once, but you'll get either a gift or kits and materials sent to you every month. So... That's pretty exciting, but I want to get that kind of... <sighs> I'm in love with this, you guys. I need to make, like, so many more. Like, this is beautiful. I need this in my life. It's beautiful. I'm so pleased. <laughs> so, um, good luck to all of our patrons and to all of our future patrons. We'll be doing the drawing on a my May... What month is it? May 15th of 2012. And if you're watching this after um, that date, please check us out on Patreon anyways. I do two giveaways a month with different fairy houses like this. So the one that we did the drawing for today that I still haven't sent off was this house, which is pretty cool. So I need to get that into the mail tomorrow, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and... Um, so yeah, there's, and we're always doing all kinds of cool giveaways and stuff too on like our Facebook and Instagram and DeviantArt and also here on YouTube where you don't have to be a patron, but the fairy houses are a patron exclusive giveaway. So thank you guys so much for watching and for all of your support. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and uh, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>